Morgan. My name's Kate Rayworth and I call myself a renegade economist because I studied economics at university but I was so frustrated by the theories that I was taught that I want to be part of the movement to rewrite economics to make it fit for the challenges that we face today. So I believe we need a new picture of prosperity, of what human well-being looks like in the 21st century. And I can define it so simply for you in two little objects. On the one hand, the bean. We all need food, uh, housing, healthcare, education, the basic sustenance of life that every human being needs to live well. But we also need this little blue marble, our planetary home. We need a stable climate, fertile soils, healthy oceans, a protective ozone layer. So human well-being depends upon meeting the needs of all, but doing so within the means of the planet. And if I was to draw that for you as a picture, crazy though it sounds, it would look a bit like a donut, a rosquinha, <laughs> with a hole in the middle. So the hole in the middle is a place where people are falling short on the essentials of life. They don't have enough food, healthcare, education, housing. We want to get everybody out of the hole. But we can't overshoot the outer limits of this donut either because there we put so much pressure on this extraordinary living planet that we begin to kick it out of balance. We cause climate breakdown, acidify the oceans, a hole in the ozone layer. And so the challenge is to meet the needs of all, get everybody out of the hole without overshooting the edge. Everybody in that donut ring itself. To me, this is a compass for human prosperity in the 21st century. All of the ideas that we use to understand the world, whether in economics or politics or sociology, are framed through a certain lens of how we see and what we see. We create these frames with our words, with our pictures. And it's really powerful when you realize that the ideas you're experiencing have been framed and maybe you don't agree with that frame. So 20th century economics, I believe, was framed around the idea of never-ending growth, this ever-rising line of GDP going up, up, up. That's the image of progress that we've inherited. But we need a new image of progress. And if we start with the donut, actually progress is not an ever-rising line of growth. It's balance coming into balance to meet the needs of all within the means of the planet. A very different shape, a very different feel in your body. And we need new words, new names for what success looks like. So many people are searching for a beautiful phrase to articulate human prosperity, flourishing within the web of life, for example. When we name things, we give them a presence that they didn't have before. The philosopher Hannah Arendt once said that a stray dog has a far better chance of surviving if it's given a name. And I think we can realize that unnamed ideas and unnamed beauties and important values in the world risk being lost. So we must name them and point them out and draw them and talk about them and feel them and perform them to make them visible to ourselves so that we can put them at the heart of new frames for the 21st century. We are in the middle of a most incredible transformation of ideas, of reframing the way that we humanity understand the beautiful living planet on which we depend and our deep interdependence with it. So we're all searching for new words and images and ideas and stories that make this new picture clear to ourselves and everybody has a role in that, in the language we use, the pictures we draw or the pictures we teach, the way we challenge our professors about what they're teaching and the images they're showing and the assumptions hidden in that language. But also in our daily lives, we have a role in bringing about this new world. Uh, economics tells us we're either a consumer or labor, working or shopping. But actually, each one of us is a member of a family perhaps a parent or a child, a neighbor, a volunteer, an employee, an entrepreneur, a student, a professor, a voter, investor, a divester, a protester. And these many, many different characters that we take on 
all of them can play a part in helping to reframe and redirect the economy from the one we have today that we've inherited and is out of date to the one that we increasingly understand that we need to create if we, more than 10 billion humans, are going to thrive here together this century.